Hello, God bless. It's me, Dick Jr. I'm here today to read you Mark chapter 1. We're going to start the book of Mark today. And a uh, uh, small disclaimer, I may pontificate a bit here and there uh, in the book of Mark because I'm especially um, um, emotionally attached to it, I guess, because I went through it with a really good friend of mine uh, three years ago. He's a master's at Moody Bible, Moody Bible College. And... Uh, Anyway, so we spent a lot of time in this book, but it's my own personal belief because of now that I've read all four Gospels so many times that uh, if somebody were to ask me where to start, where should I start reading the Bible? Where should I start? You know, I would say go to the book of Mark because Mark explains exactly what you need to know to understand the Gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, the first verse of this will explain the gospel that this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ which is what we call the four books um, Matthew Mark Luke and John at the beginning of the New Testament but um so I have prayed and asked God uh, to help me read to you today um, and I suggest anytime that you place yourself in God's word that you ask God to help you understand as well <coughs> Excuse me, I've caught a bit of a cold. <clears throat> um, so, I didn't make any references out of this today. I'm just going to go ahead and pretty much read it through. Um, a lot of stuff happens. This is just, just Mark is very rapid fire. It's 16 chapters long, where we just finished Matthew. That's 28. You see what I mean? So... <clears throat> Mark contains a lot of the same things, but Mark is very rapid fire about it. And Mark's book contains a lot more um, description of stuff and bits of Jesus' words all the way through. Where Matthew was Jesus' words, page after page sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started and uh, we'll read through this together. <clears throat> The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's verse 1. See what I mean? But it says right there, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ right here. This is also the first uh, book of the New Testament, I believe, that was written. But it's definitely the first gospel. The first of the first four. But I'm pretty sure this is the first book of the New Testament written. And this was written by Mark, who was a very young man uh, during the first three years of Jesus' ministry, but he was a bit older towards the end of Jesus' ministry and was present for uh, a lot of these things, um, including uh, when they took Jesus away, I believe. But <clears throat> anyway, we'll get to that when we get to that in Mark. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading again in verse 2. <clears throat> As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, and that's, I believe, Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, I, I wrote 40, uh, chapter 40, verse 3 here because some of the words that are contained in these next couple verses are in there, but it may be contained elsewhere in Isaiah as well. So, uh, behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And repentance just means giving it up, turning around and going the other direction. That's all it means. So, uh, and all the country of Judea was going out to him and all the people of Jerusalem. And they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Uh, John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and his diet was locusts and wild honey. Well, pause right there. That's verse 6. The reason that John wore a coat of camel's hair and ate locusts and wild honey is because John was of a certain sect of Judaism that was a little more... or. They had their own tra special traditions. I believe they did not cut their hair or their beards. And uh, this camel's hair 
and eating locusts and honey because they wouldn't eat meat and they wouldn't eat, you know, there's certain things that they would not eat. So these are the things that were available for John to eat. And it was because he had given himself to God and as a show of his, um, I don't know, how would you say it? His faithfulness. He did certain dietary things and certain things according to the word of God and according to what God had told uh, other people in his sect. But what I'm trying to say is that John was set apart for God, sort of like a priest or some of that matter. And he was raised in a very uh, um, religious, for lack of words, home. But his father was a teacher of Torah and he would know Torah very well. And he was taught Torah. So anyway, uh, John was clothed with locusts. Okay, uh, verse 7. <clears throat> he was preaching and saying, After me one is coming who is mightier than I, and I am not fit to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read that again. I baptize with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And that is what he says, and that's what he means. Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of heavens, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. Immediately the Spirit impelled him to go into the wilderness. I'm going to pause. Uh, this vision that John was having is an answer to prophecy that's brought up in one of the other Gospels. Okay, so And John's the only one that saw this, and only one, I believe, that heard this. But I know he's the only one that saw this. He saw the Spirit come down onto Jesus, just like he says. Not everybody that was there at the time saw it. John saw it. Okay, that's the important part of it. <clears throat> uh, so the Spirit had impelled him to go into the wilderness. Jesus was impelled to go into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. And uh, he was with the wild beasts and the angels were ministering to him. And I'm going to pause for just a second. The 40-day fast is a religious fast. And also, this represented 40 days of Jerusalem wandering in the wilderness. Also, this was because he had to be tempted in all ways and resist, okay? And resist the devil. <clears throat> so that he would know what we have to go through. You see where I'm at? Now, the other thing is that it says the angels were ministering him to him. They were giving him the word, the actual word and the prophecies, and the, you know, the things that he needed for his ministry. That's why they were ministering to him, okay? Now, after John had been taken into custody, also, <clears throat> after Jesus had been there 40 days, he needed food and sustenance, okay? This whole section right here is told better in some of the other Gospels. Here, it just sounds like, like I told you, this is a Cliff Notes, of, of the other Gospels, in a way. But it also contains everything you really need. Okay, so now, after uh, John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the Gospel of God. So, as soon as they took John away, Jesus came back and was preaching the exact same thing that John was preaching. He was saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and that is the exact same message that John had. <clears throat> so, John's people heard Jesus' voice because John had prepared them to hear it which is what he said, uh, what was said back here in, in early in, in this chapter, that to prepare the way, okay? Uh, and as he was going, oh, sorry, time is full. kingdom of God is at hand, preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. And he's talking about the fact that he was here as far as the time being fulfilled. It was time for God's perfect plan. And then the next part of that that Jesus was preaching is repent and believe in the gospel, in the good news, you know, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the good news. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the good news. That's what that's what nobody gets. That's no nobody tells you that either. So 
Um, as he was going along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants and went away to follow him. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and began to teach. And this is what Jesus did. Every Sabbath, he went to the synagogue to teach. Wherever they were, that's what he did. Okay? And they were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes. It's not that his teaching... He was teaching the truth. Let's put it that way. The scribes sometimes change things not necessarily writing wise but the way that they told you that it was to be interpreted maybe or they interpreted it badly perhaps because obviously there was a problem that's why Jesus was sent okay um, <clears throat> just then there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit and he cried out so there was a demon in the synagogue in a man right among them and that can happen literally anywhere okay Saying, what business do we have with each other? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This is demon screaming out, okay, at him. Because if, if this man screamed that he was the Son of God, you see what I mean? Then that would cause questions from the, uh, the synagogue officials, you know, and could cause him to... Uh, be killed or stoned or questioned or, you know, the ministry would not take out the ground if this, you know, so the point of it was that Jesus had to silence the demon because the demon knew who he was. And I'm saying to this day, okay, the demons know who he is and believe in him. All right. So if we don't, that's on us. Okay. Um, so verse 25, and Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And throwing him into convulsions, the unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. They were all amazed so that they debated among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teacher with authority. He commands even the, unspirits, the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And the reason why they're so amazed is because nobody else could do this. Because the spirit of the Lord was not with them. All right, And God had left the church. Or the synagogues, okay, because of what they were doing. He was not with them anymore. Immediately, the news about him spread everywhere into all the surrounding districts of Galilee. That's why God sent Jesus, okay, to be there to gather us all together. And immediately after they came out of the synagogue, they came into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever, and immediately they spoke to Jesus about her. And he came to her and raised her up taking her by the hand, and the fever left her, and she waited on them. When evening came, after the sun had set, they began bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city had gathered at the door, and he healed many who were ill with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he was not permitting the demons to speak because they knew who he was. And even the demons knew who he was. You see what I mean? Uh, in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. And Simon and his companions searched for him. They found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. Commonly, Jesus would, would slip away to pray. Okay, that's what he was doing here. He said to them, Let us go somewhere else to the towns nearby so that I may preach there also for that is what I came for. And that's exactly what he came for to preach the gospel to the Jews. So he was traveling from little city to little city, to little town to little town, to tiny synagogues, preaching the gospel each Sabbath. You see what I mean? Um, and one of the reasons why if he would have stayed where he was, they had already gathered crowds. You see what I mean? There would be more crowds, 
and then it would be a different situation. He's trying to get out and talk to people. Uh, so anyways, uh, verse 39, and he went into their synagogues throughout all Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. See what I mean? And the leper came, and a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him and falling on his knees before him, saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And why he said it that way, if you're willing, you can make me clean, is because he knew he was fully capable. But uh, uh, to lay hands on a leper is uh, uh, something that a rabbi or a holy man would never do because he's unclean, you see what I mean? So uh, that's why he said, if you are willing. And uh, moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him. And he was cleansed. And he sternly warned him and immediately sent him away. And he said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your, uh, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. So what he's doing is he said, Now that you're clean, go show the priest because they're always the judge about clean and unclean. And obviously he would be clean because Jesus cleaned him. So the priest would look at him and say, You are clean. Well, there was uh, an offering, like, you know, that you're supposed to give to God for cleaning you. Okay, so that's what they, he was saying. And what he, why he said this is because he didn't want this man to circumvent, circumvent the law of Moses that these priests were using and believed in, and he also believed in, okay? He wanted him to continue to obey the Word of God. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely, and to spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter a city, but stayed out in unpopulated areas, and they were coming to him from everywhere. And that's why he told the guy to be quiet. Shush, because when he did this, Jesus was no longer able to get to the people. He had to go out and hide from the people, and they still came to him. You see what I mean? But if this man would have done what he said and kept silent, uh then Jesus might have been able to continue his ministry in the towns. But uh, that's all I have to say for uh, Mark chapter 1. And um, God bless and thanks for listening.